Thanks for joining me today. I'm going to be playing Imperial Settlers, which is an engine building game that I quite enjoy. I've just recently picked up some expansion packs for the game and I'm looking forward to trying out the, the new cards in solo mode. So for those of you who don't know Imperial Settlers, here is the blurb from the rulebook. Settlers from four major world powers have discovered new lands with new resources and opportunities. The Romans, Barbarians, Egyptians and Japanese all move here at once to expand the boundaries of their empires. They build new buildings to strengthen their economy, excavate mines and farm fields to gather resources and build barracks and training grounds to train soldiers. They soon discover the area is far too small for everyone and war ensues. Imperial Settlers is a card game that lets players lead one of four factions. The game is played over five rounds during which players explore new lands, build buildings, trade resources, conquer enemies and thus score victory points. So, I'm going to be playing the game in solo mode and one of the new things that the expansion adds in are different personalities for the different factions when you're playing against the virtual player and I thought we would try out um, the Barbarians card which increases the number of attacks that the virtual player makes during each round and I'm going to be playing as the Romans um, this is a faction I've played a little bit in the base game and I quite enjoy them so I thought we could add some of the new cards for the Romans into their faction deck and maybe create some some interesting and fun synergies. So what I'm going to do first is just lay out all of the uh, faction cards for the Romans so that we can have a think about what um, should be taken out and then take some of the expansion cards to swap them in. Okay. So we have the Builder, which produces wood and stone. Colossus, which can trade people and stone for points. That's a one of. Stone Cutter, which produces stone. That's a two of. Sculptor's Workshop, that's also a two of. And that trades people and stone for points. I'm laying them out like this so that I am... Um, I can see how many of each card there are because when you swap out cards you need to swap out one set for one set so a set of two gets swapped out for a set of two and a set of three for a set of three and so on uh, so there's another sculptor's workshop there engineers spend two people to remove one enemy building from the game and gain one point that's a one of young sculptor that's a three of Spend one stone to gain one point, maybe activate it twice. Administration, that's a three of. Each time you build a faction building, gain one money and one point. Roman Fortress is a one of. Each time you build black buildings, gain two points. Headquarters is a two of. Each time you build a grey building, gain one point or one money. Trade colony is a three of. Produce a person and money. Gardens is one of. Each time you build a red, gain two points. That's another headquarters. Architect is a one of. Draw two faction cards. Keep one of your choice and reshuffle the other. Roman bank is a one of. Produces one money. Another trade colony. Another administration. Another Builder, another young sculptor, another young sculptor, Legion, so that produces one common card and has a building bonus of a common card, that's a two of, Barracks is a one of, produces two people, Gladiator School, that's a two of, spend one person to gain one raise token, another Gladiator School, another Trade Colony, Legion, Administration, Spies is a one-off. Spend one person to take one enemy deal and add it to your own deals. Additionally, gain one point. Stonecutter again, 
and warehouses, which is a one of. You may store any number of wood, stone, and food in your faction storage. So there we go, that's the base game Roman faction deck. So let's take the expansion cards now. So I'm not planning to add in too many new features. I don't think I'll use any of the ones that produce technology tokens from the Atlanteans expansion or the prayer mechanic. I would like to try those out, but I think I'll save that for another video, uh, perhaps using the Atlanteans or the Amazon faction, or the um, Aztec faction, rather. Instead, I'd like to try out the set um, ability from three is a magic number. Uh, so this is one of the cards I'd like to try. Uh, the line of fortifications. So this is a three of, so it's going to have to be swapped out for one of these. And it produces one point each set of grey, grey and black in your empire. So that means you look and see how many greys and how many blacks you have. And for every two grey and one black you have, that's a set and it produces a point every round. So I think the most natural fit is for it to be traded out for the young sculptor because they're both points producing cards and they both cost the same, uh, one stone and discard one building. So I think I'll make that swap. So we'll put the young sculptors away, put in line of fortification. So what this means is I need to make sure I've got enough gray and black in my deck to ensure that I get this bonus uh, triggered reliably. So Interrogation Master is another card I could add in. This is a two of. And this allows me to, as an action, spend one race token and one person to draw a common card. And then I can build it if it's red, brown, or gray. Otherwise, use it as a foundation. So I'm going to put this to one side because I'm not, um, not definitely putting this, this one in, but I think it's a contender. So I'll put this over here for now. And we'll have a look through and see what else we have. So I'll start by looking at greys and blacks before we then run through some of the cards again to find other ones that uh, could be worthwhile. So here's a grey Hadrian's Wall. Spend one stone to move one common, uh, common building to the faction side of your empire. The location cannot be raised. So that's interesting if I, I want to save a particular common location. Let's, uh, let's put that one for consideration. Um, a marble merchant. This is a, a gold and grey hybrid. So I can spend one stone to gain one money, and that may be activated twice. That's quite useful, although I think I'll probably be generating sufficient money through use of administration. I find this is a really important card for the Romans, as it either produces money, which is a wild resource, or points, which are points. So I will almost certainly be keeping administration in this stack, and uh, as such, I, I don't think I need more sources of, of gold. Uh, let's have a look at Cohort. So this is a one of, a black. Spend one person to choose a common card from hand and place it in your empire as a foundation. So that's really interesting because foundations can then be used to build faction buildings and almost every Roman building requires a building to be discarded as its cost. So having a cheap way to get common cards into play as foundations is pretty good. So I definitely think that one is up for consideration. So I'll put this here. So these are the ones from the Atlanteans expansion, so we'll skip through those. This is from the Aztecs expansion, so we'll skip those. Uh, okay. Uh, I think this is from the Amazon expansion, but we could include this as there's not any significant new mechanics. New Religion, that's a black card, discard one card to gain two raise tokens and building bonus to raise tokens. So because I'm thinking of putting interrogation master in, um, I do want to find sufficient um, generation for raise tokens to make it uh, work. 
one, so I think this is a good card to consider including. Tenements, that's a grey. Remove one location to gain two foundations and one person, and it's a free build. Okay, that's interesting. Um, the fact that it gain it changes one building for two foundations is effectively increasing the number of faction locations I can build without needing to draw more common cards and faction locations are each worth two points at the end of the game so it's a strong ability to, to have so again we'll, we'll put that one for consideration Greek gold is a two of production activate one building bonus of any faction in your empire and then building bonus one stone so I want to make sure that I've got a good building bonus that can be built for production such as new religion is one option tenants is another so it also doesn't cost anything or it doesn't have any building cost so that's another good one to, to consider and then researchers spend one person and one stone to draw until you find one grey card reshuffle the rest building bonus one person so that's quite good but it would need to be swapped out for either administration or trade colony and i think both of those are sufficiently useful that i'm not keen on swapping those out so i think i'll say no to researchers this time so before we look at the rest of the expansion cards let's see if we can slot some of these ones we've pulled out in. Uh, we'll start with uh, the interrogation master. So this needs to be swapped out for a two of. So I don't want to swap out gladiator school as that's a way of generating tokens. So these two are obviously quite synergistic. And I don't want to swap out builder as a way of cheaply producing stone and wood. Stone cutter, I'm considering whether or not I should swap that one out, but I think the one I want to do is sculptor's workshop. So even though this is a grey and swapping for a black, I think the main thing I'm lacking in this deck is black because I have six greys up here, because these are three offs, and trade colony counts as red, brown and grey. Whereas all my blacks are either twos or one off, so I actually have a fair few, bit fewer of those. So I need to have um, preferably half the amount of blacks as I have greys to have the optimum distribution in the deck. So we'll, we'll swap this out for now and then we'll, we'll do some counting to find out where we are. Okay. Um, so cohort is a one off quite like this one as a way of gaining foundations. So spies, I think, is a good one to get rid of here because the virtual player doesn't build deals. So that's not going to do a great deal for me, aside from being used as a deal itself to draw cards. Um, so I'll put cohort in and take spies out. Uh, new religion is the one of. I think I'll swap warehouses out for this as generally I find that you want to be using all your resources every turn rather than relying on uh, storing them for future turns. So I think I'll take warehouses out and put in new religion. With another red card going that probably means I can swap gardens out because I don't have that many reds in my faction deck to build just the trade colonies. So that could put tenements in. Okay, so let's do a count where we're at now. I've got two more sets, a one of and a two of, both gray that could go in. So I've got six grays at the top here, plus another two is eight, plus another two is 10, and then 11. And then blacks we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
So we do actually want to increase the frequency of greys here. So I think let's get Hadrian's Wall in. So I could swap this out for Barracks, Colossus, Architect, Roman Bank, or even one of the base game blacks. So I won't swap out Roman Fortress because that means that whenever I build black I get points and there's quite a lot of blacks in this deck. So we'll keep keep this one. Engineers, I think I could probably switch out for Hadrian's Wall. So then that changes the distribution to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven blacks to ten. 12 greys. So if we do another grey switch, then that's the perfect distribution. So the question is, what do we switch? Oh, it's either Legion or Builder. That's actually a tough one because I could end up with too little production. If I switch out Builder, I won't have the stone or wood to continue continually build. And if I swap out Legion, then my card draw goes down. But I think if I'm going to swap it out, it will be for the builder, because yeah, it activates one building bonus of any faction you're in so I want to retain as many building bonuses as I can, and there is one on Legion. And I also have foundations on tenements, and race tokens on new religion. So this one I think would be dependent on whether or not I get the cards out at the right time, but I'm willing to give it a go. So let's take uh, Builder out and in goes Greek Gold. Again, let's have a look and see if there's any other switches we want to make. I think I'm pretty set on my three ofs and two ofs, so we'll just look at see if there's any one ofs that we want to to put in. So there's uh, oh, there's a grey I missed. Former World Wonder. You may store any number of stone in your faction storage. Building bonus three stone. So that would work well with Greek gold. You also have tenement house. Spend one to gain one card. Okay, let's, uh, let's put these two over here for consideration. I like both of those. So that's a two of new city. Each time you build a Roman faction building, you gain a person. So is that better than barracks? Depends. Depends on whether or not I'm building two more faction bit locations a turn. I think I'll stick with barracks. It's a two of, it's a three of, two. Ah, here's a black. I oh, know these are from the uh, Atlanteans expansion, so I'll skip past those. Okay. Trade on crossroads. Spend one person to draw three faction cards, discard one of them to gain three goods of its colour, reshuffle the rest. Okay, that could help me to potentially mitigate some of the loss of construction uh, resources. So let's put that one for consideration. I think we will leave it there. So let's put these ones aside and then See if we can switch these in. Okay. So ones I could lose include the Roman Bank, uh, the Barracks, and the Colossus. I think. I think the rest I'm pretty set on keeping. As I really like Architect as a way of gaining cards. So 
So there's interesting synergy between Colossus and former World Wonder in that this gives three stone and allows me to store stone and then Colossus can it's a way of spending lots of stone on points. So it's one point person, three stone. So that potentially could be a synergy. Uh, so I could switch out former world wonder with either the Roman Bank of the Barracks. Uh, Tenement House doesn't cost anything. And this allows me to spend a person to gain a card. So I think I might take out, let's take out Barracks Roman Bank for the former World Wonder, the Tenement House, and I think we'll go without trade on crossroads for this game. Okay. So there we go. I think that is the tech. Uh, so let's put all of this together. These cards here, these are the uh, attack cards that the virtual player will draw. So because we're playing with the barbarians, they will draw three of these every turn and it will determine which of my common locations the virtual player attempts to attack. So I want to be careful um, if there are resources uh, on my common side that can be raised. Uh, that match what I can see in the attack pile. When I resolve the first attack, I'll explain how it works. It's quite easy to see it in action. Okay. Let's get a common deck as well. Give that a shuffle. The aim of the solo mode is to ensure that by the end of the game you have more faction locations than the virtual player has collected in common locations. So every turn the virtual player can gain up to two common locations if I cannot or choose not to raise them before they get added to virtual player's collection, and if they attack my common locations, they can take them and add them to their collection. So the game will take place over five rounds, and if at the end of those five rounds I have more faction locations than they have common locations, then I win and I can total up my score, which is based on the points that I've accumulated through actions and production throughout the game. And then I score uh, points for each of the locations I have remaining in my empire, which is one point for every common and two for every faction.
Right, so um, for setup, I draw two faction cards and two common cards to form my hand. So, one, two. So we have the Gladiator School and the Colossus. So these aren't the greatest cards to start with. Um, they don't produce anything by themselves. Um, but hopefully we'll get a good, good draw of commons. So commons, marketplace, it's also points, and lumberjack's route. Okay, so that's a bit better because that does produce wood, although only one per turn. Okay. Uh, so we now have the lookout phase. So in the lookout phase of uh, the solo game, we reveal four cards from the deck common cards. I also gain one faction card, so I'll do that now before I forget. So Greek gold. Okay, so you activate one building bonus, so any faction building in your empire. I don't have any building bonuses aside from the Greek gold itself. So I'll have to see how that goes. Okay, so the common locations available this round are New Forest, Baker, Quarry, and the Mill. Okay, so I now get to choose one of these four to add to my hand, and then the virtual player will, at random, take one of the remaining cards and put it into their playing area, and then I can choose another one, and then the virtual player will take the remaining one. So I'm going to I'm going to take the quarry because the uh, Roman buildings are quite stone hungry. So let's make sure we've got some good stone production going on. So the quarry is produce one stone, building bonus one stone. We also have here new forest, which is spend one person to gain one wood. That can be activated twice. The baker which produces, uh, doesn't produce it, it gives a uh, one point for each red in your empire uh, to a maximum of six, and then conditionally draw one card, and then the mill, each time you build a red building, gain one money and one point. So I have very few reds in my faction deck, so these two aren't going to do a great deal for me. So hopefully the virtual player won't pick up New Forest, because that's a think the one I want. So I'm going to roll the dice and then they'll take this on one and two, this on three and four, and this on five and six. Okay, so they take the mill, so I'll take the new forest. And they will then take the baker. So these two cards are now in the virtual player area and I can raise them if I have a sufficient number of raise tokens. So it's two to raise a, uh, an enemy location, uh, and then they will go to the discard pile. If not, at the end of the round, they'll go to their collection, and uh, I'll gain the resources shown at the top of the field uh, there uh, if I successfully raise it. So we now go to production. So my starting production is two workers. One raise token. I can take a defensive token, but it doesn't do anything in the solo game, so I won't, uh, won't take that. And then one stone and one wood. Okay. Right. So let's think about how best to use what I've got here to play as many of these cards as I can. So if I play the quarry, that uses both my wood and my stone, and then would produce one stone immediately, plus the building bonus of one stone, leaving me with two stone. I would need to gain some wood to be able to play anything further, which I could get from raising either the marketplace, the new forest, or the lumberjack's route, which would enable me to get a 
another one down. If I can get the gladiator school down this turn, that does allow me to gain up to two raise tokens. No, it's just one actually. Hmm. So I don't think I'm going to be in a position to raise the enemy cards this turn, so I think they're likely to gain those. So instead I'll look to raise one of my cards from hand, because I'm not going to be able to build everything here. So if I'm not using the people, does that mean I want to put the new forest into play? Is that better than the lumberjack's route? So the net of the lumberjack's route is zero. The net of the new forest in terms of wood is one, but I have to spend workers instead. I could just spend those two works on another wood, so it ends up equal. So I think there's actually not much difference between them. Okay. I think we want to start with the quarry. Oh, before I actually do this, I do need to turn over the top card of the attack deck, because this might change which cards I want to play. Okay, so it's points. So what this means is any card that has raise uh, to gain points at the top here is under threat, because the enemy is looking for cards that have that on during their attack phase. But I don't have any of those, so I don't need to worry too much. Okay, so let's get the quarry into play. Uh, so it's a production building, so it goes to the top here. Let's spend a wood and a stone. And I immediately get the production, which is a stone, and the building bonus, which is also a stone. Okay. Let's also play Greek gold. As it only costs a stone and then it will immediately produce a stone because it activates its production, which is uh, gain, activate one building bonus for any faction building in your empire, so that gets a stone, and then I get the building bonus as well, which is another stone. Right. So if I use my raise token to raise the new forest. That gets me two wood. Which I can then use to play the lumberjack's route. And that costs two wood, but then immediately produces one plus the building bonus. So get the two wood back. And I can then play the Gladiator School for one stone. And hmm. just thinking, is it better for me to do that? Should I make a deal to get a person? But I don't think there's anything I can do with a person. So if I build it, I could gain another raise token, then raise the marketplace from hand, which would mean I could play the Colossus. And I think. gain the four. Stone or four points, but I would lose both of my production buildings. Now I could lose these anyway due to the, the virtual player attack, but it's unlikely that I would lose both. In fact, it's actually impossible that I would lose both because uh, they're going to reveal three cards, and any pair that matches what's on this raise field will uh, cause it to be discarded and added to the virtual player's pile. So I think 
one option is for me to spend these two workers to draw a card. So before I build the gladiator school, I could do that instead. This would leave me without a worker. But there are lots of things that I could build with these resources that probably do more than the gladiator school. So let's spend those two to draw a faction card, which is administration. That's that's good. That's really a solid card for me right now. So I can spend two stone to build the administration, which is a feature building. And I have to discard one of my locations, which we think. Let's do the quarry. So I already have a way of producing stone over here. Plus I could potentially make a deal in the future. So discard the quarry for the building cost and administration. And then because I built a faction building, I can immediately gain a coin. Now do I want to use that coin to build the gladiator school? or the marketplace. I think I will build the marketplace. For two. And I'll spend this coin as though it were a food to make a deal for get some more stone production. So I immediately gain the stone, but do I want to spend it to build the gladiator school? I think I will. So I have to discard another common, which will be the marketplace. Okay. So I managed to use all the cards I had, which it's surprising. Um, so hopefully I'll uh, have some ways of drawing cards next turn. Okay, so the virtual player adds these two cards to their storage area. And they do their virtual attack. So starting with this card. So wood, that's not good. I'm hoping that they don't draw another wood because that would mean I lose my lumberjacks route. Attack number two is a wood. Okay, so that's not great. And attack number three, it doesn't do anything but I need to reveal anyway, is a food. Okay. So going into round two. So I draw a faction card, which is line of fortification. That's good because I've all, that will actually give me one point every turn now because I'll have a set of um, gray, gray, and black. Um, then we get the four common cards. So we have the new forest, the ruins, the farmers at work, and the castle. So the new forest we've seen before, again, this, you know, turns people into uh, wood. The ruins has no effect other than a building bonus of a person, but it works very well as a foundation. Farmers at work, choose one of your other production buildings and gain the goods it provides. Building bonus one card, castle may spend one person to draw one card, may be activated twice. So I think this is a really good card for me. Although, I probably want to take the ruins. The reason being is that I'm going to gain 
one sword off production. And if I spend a person, I could get another sword. And if the my opponent takes the castle, I could use that uh, those two raised tokens to discard the castle and draw cards anyway. And then with the you know, ruins, that gives me another person um, to potentially spend the castle if I don't get it. No, I mean, if I do get it. So, ruins, I think, will be the first card I take. Uh, then the virtual player will take the castle. And I will take, I think, farms at work. Let's take farms at work. And the federal player gains the new forest. Okay. So production. So I'm now gaining two people. One raise token. One, two, three stone. And one wood. Okay. So let's start by getting these ruins into play. Then spend a person to gain a raise token. Spend these to raise the castle. Draw two cards. We'll draw faction cards. Roman fortress and another gladiator school. Okay. So what can I do with those? So I can only play one of these currently, as I only have one fort, uh, foundation available to use. I think it's probably got to be in the line of fortification. So can I make deals to get the other cards down? And if so, which ones do I want to do? So if I play this, I can gain a gold. Then I can exchange this for another wood. And then use that three wood to play farms at work. The building bonus gets me a card. Which could be another common. And if I can build that, that could potentially I might get another faction building into play. Okay, let's try that. So we'll start with Land of Fortification, which is stone, exchange for the ruins. I gain a gold from administration, and then the production gets me a point. Then I exchange this for one wood, and spend two wood and a coin as though it were a wood to play farms at work and we will produce another point we'll gain the goods it provides I guess that means I can't use it to gain points so instead I'll use it to gain the stone from farms at work. Then I'll take the building bonus as a common card. Okay, so it's quite 
quarry, which I can't build. Okay. So we stop there. this card and then does its attack. So I really hope this isn't a person. Oh, that's really unfortunate. It's, um, these barbarians are really doing a number on my empire right now. Okay, so I lose the stone. Faction card. Well, that would have been useful last turn because I just lost a bunch of stone. And then four. So the village produces people, which is another thing I'm in short supply of, and they will take the joiner. Okay. Right. Let's start by getting our production. So that's one, two. One raise token, stone, plus another stone, plus the stone from Greek gold, a point from the line of fortification, and wood. So the minute I've got three commons and three faction cards, one of them does not require a common building to be discarded as its cost. So I might take two factions here uh, from the watchtower. So I'm going to exchange these two or a wood, and then spend two wood to construct the watchtower. And that gets me two cards. Administration again, and the interrogation master. Okay. So let's build former world wonder, as it's free. Uh, so I immediately get a three stone and it triggers that. Uh, before I play the form of World Wonder, I should play Administration. Yeah, because I want to get those extra coins. So let's do that first. Two stone in exchange for the watchtower. I get a coin. 
coin plus another coin for each administration. So now if I play former world wonder, I can get another two coins plus three stone. the village which produces two people uh, in exchange for one gold uh, as they all would I can spend a stone and a coin as they all would for the quarry which produces two stone Three faction cards. So I want to get another black down as then I'd have grey, 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 so four greys, and then two blacks, which I mean I'm getting two points a turn now from line of fortification. But first I think I'm gonna draw a card. Let's make it a I think a common card, because I potentially could play all of these. Okay. So, what I could do. is raise the pig farmer for the person and the food then build the Roman fortress and the interrogation master in exchange for the village and the quarry this would mean I only have th three greys so I'd be getting a point but I could then use the interrogation master and if it is a grey, I get to build it, otherwise I get it as a foundation. And I'd get two points from building the interrogation master. I don't know, I'd be short um, a raised token in that instance. Hmm. So it probably makes more sense then to build the gladiator school and make a deal with the interrogation master. Okay. So yeah, we use a raise token to raise the pig farmer. And then we will build the Roman fortress for two coins. And that triggers administration and itself. So I think I'll gain four points. In exchange for the quarry, no, we'll do the village, we'll keep the quarry around for one turn. So we could potentially get a point out of it. Also there isn't any stone on the attack cards just yet, so I'm less likely of losing them as opposed to the person, which means I could very easily lose the village. Um, and I think instead of taking points for administration, if I take coins, I 
can spend both of these as food. Uh, no, I only need to do that once. So, one of the administration gains a point, the other one gains a coin, because I can use the coin as a food for the interrogation master, which gets a coin, and then use that coin for food on the gladiator school for a person. And then I can use this person to get a raise token, which I can store because Romans can store any number of raise tokens as their ability. Great, okay. Um, so end of round, again, these two. And they resolve their attack. So that's coin card and wood, so no stone there, so I keep my quarry, and on to round four. So my faction card is another interrogation master, and the commons are castle, rubble, armour, And the pig farmer. Okay. So I think I want to take the castle here. Because uh, those cards are going to be very useful. And then my opponent takes pig farmer. And I could take either the armourer or the rubble. I think I'll probably take the armourer as it gets me two points whenever I build black. And they will take the rubble. Also have sufficient stone, I think, for probably the rest of the game. Okay. So, production. So I get three people. Uh, one coin, one, two, five stone, uh, one wood, one raise token, and one, two, three, four, one, two, two points from the line of fortification, and then another stone from the quarry. Okay. Right, let's start by getting the castle into play. Wood and stone. We will draw faction card, legion. And Think another faction card. Trade colony. So Legion produces common cards and has a building bonus of a common card. And then the trade colony produces people and money. Uh, so put those people on castle to indicate I've used it. So I think we start by getting the Legion into play to get some more common cards. 
Uh, so I'll use this coin as a food and we will discard the castle. And I get two common cards. Acting troop. Spend one person, choose another. If you want other action locations, discard goods, spent to activate it, you can activate the building again. Okay. And another quarry. Right. I also get my administration bonus for building the legion. So I'll take, I think, two coins because I need to find a way of generating wood. So I want to play my trade colony uh, in the place of the quarry as it's a grey building so it will work for line fortification but is safe from the virtual player attack uh, so let's get that into play in exchange for one coin as a wood and two stone I'm going to use the quarry and then I get my administration bonus What do I want to use for that? Let's see, so don't think I need to play another acting troop because I only have the one action. Is there a way I can use the interrogation master? play one of these. Probably want to play the armor in that case. So I need at least one coin for that. So take one coin and one point. I only have a coin. Hmm. Let's let's take two points. Okay, so we'll play the armor for a coin and a stone, which produces a raise token. Then we will add uh, again two points because of the Roman fortress. Then I'll we'll play a wood, discarding the armor to play the interrogation master. Then spend a person and a raise token to draw top card of the common deck. So it's not red, brown, or grey, so it just becomes a foundation. And I can then if I spend two raise tokens to raise this pig farmer. Gain a person and a food. I can spend that person on the gladiator school to gain another raise token, which I think I'll keep. I don't think I got my points for administration uh, or Roman fortress, so I'll take another four points for for that. Okay, I think that's uh, that's everything. Discard the food, keep everything else. Virtual play against that card. They can't take any of my commons, but we still resolve the virtual attack. And into the final round. So, we could 
12th stone cutter and four cards from the common deck sawmill castle meeting place and lumberjack's root so once again i think we just want to take the castle um, virtual player will take the meeting place Uh, Sawmill gets points, so that's probably the best one. And the virtual player takes the number to upgrade. Okay, production. So we've got. Uh, let's do the cards first. So we've got one common card from the Legion. Mason, and I can take another common card from Greek Gold. So I think I'll do that. Then I get one, two, three, four people. Two coins, uh, one wood, two stone, one sword. I think that's everything. Okay. Right. So let's start by getting the cast into play and drawing some more faction cards. So, one, two. So we have our third and final administration. And the headquarters. I didn't get my points for the line of fortification. Uh, one, two, three, four, grey. One, two, three, blacks. That's another two points. Okay. <clears throat> any of the virtual players. Yes I can, I can raise the meeting place for another card. So let's do that. So two raise tokens to raise this. Gaining a person a card cohort. That's another black, so that's really useful. Worth a lot of points. So the first thing we want to play is administration. So that's two stone. In exchange for this foundation. Um, not too many coins. Probably not at this stage. So I just get three points. Okay, so before we get any further, let's count uh, how many commons the virtual player has. So that's eight. Uh, so as long as I don't allow them to gain any commons from me, the most they can get is nine. I'm on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So as long as I don't leave any commons, I will win. So now it's just about maximizing points. So if I'm playing these three faction locations, 
I would also want to get at least two commons down. And I think it probably makes most sense if they're the grey ones, because if I can play headquarters, I get points for every grey that I build. So let's start by getting the headquarters into play. In exchange for the castle and two stone. Then we play the quarry. over the quarry for two stone which I get back and then one two three four points now cohort if I put this in play another foundation but I don't have any more cards but I could draw another faction card so let's do that tenement house that's interesting it doesn't cost anything except I need a building in black If I use a person to gain a raise token, then you use this raise token to raise the acting troop. That gets me a person and a wood. Then I can use the wood. Use the wood to play the sawmill. Stone and the sawmill to play the cohort. I can then use a person. Ah, for playing the cohort, I get one two points from the Roman Fortress and another three from Administration. So that's five more points. Takes me to 34. And then I can spend a person on the Cohort to put the Merchant's Guild as a foundation. I can then play the Tenement House in exchange for that foundation for another three points. And finally, I can spend this two stone Do I want to? I'm giving them a one more card And I'm getting one point out of it But I think I have enough cards in play that I won't lose Yeah, me as well So I gain another point from headquarters. And there we go, that is the end of the last action. So let's see now if they can take out my mason. So they don't with that. They do with that because there's a stone and a star. So they take the mason and the lumberjack's route. And then last attack card does nothing. Okay, so let's count. So they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10 common locations that they've collected. I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 faction locations. So I do win. And then with the 15 faction locations, each of which is worth two points, I can add 30 to my score for a total of 68. Okay, so if I take a look at the rules, it actually tells you what rank you get for the different scores. Uh, so between 60 and 70 is the Castellan rank. So there we go. Um, in this game, I scored enough to be considered a Castellan. So that's Imperial Settlers solo mode. I really do enjoy it. I'm looking forward to trying out the other factions, the Aztecs and the Amazons and the Atlanteans, and see how they do in solo mode as well. Uh, thanks for watching and I hope you join me again soon.